right, good morning, astronomy class. Um, you might notice this is the middle of a Roman numeral. Uh, that's because I decided to skip Roman numeral one for this chapter. So uh, we are going to pick up, this is chapter 13 for you guys, okay? Um, and the title of the chapter is Man and the Universe, right? Um, I decided to skip Roman numeral one because um, there are some terms that are repeat terms, but also uh, just with the time frame of the finishing off the school year, uh, I would rather get into space flight and orbits, which is what the next Roman numeral is, rather than belabor all of these uh, terms and things like that. So that's why I skipped Roman numeral one. Um, and we are going to pick up with Roman numeral two. Don't worry, I will take anything from Roman numeral one off of your study sheet and off of your test. Speaking of study sheets, seniors, I really need a email address from you, okay? Um, please read the post that I made yesterday on the LMS um, as to why I need that email address, all right? So the history of space flight, here we go. All right, rockets, solid fuel rockets. These can be kept in storage for several years before being used. Now, uh, man has always been fascinated with the sky. All right, we've talked about that throughout the school year a little bit, how different um, cultures, how they studied the sky, what they believed about space and things like that. Um, but in the late 1800s, early 1900s, people started deciding, hey, we want to go up there. So the idea of rocketry became very, very popular, kind of boomed. And solid fuel rockets were what people uh, worked with for a very long period of time. But then the idea of liquid fuel rockets came into play. Um, so liquid fuel liquid fuel, excuse me, rockets use various liquids that expand when they react and launch the rocket. These were invented by Robert Goddard, who is considered the father of modern rocketry. Um, Werner von Braun was a German engineer that would become the United States top rocket designer. He would take uh, Robert Goddard's basic um, devices, basic plans, and he would add to them and basically begin, not begin NASA, but begin the ideas of NASA and begin the, um, the working, the, when I say the ideas of NASA, the ideas of a, of a, I don't wanna say society, um, but of a company, quote unquote, that was dedicated to getting to space, that was dedicated to studying space and studying rockets and things like that, all right? Uh, the race to the moon. Now, some of this, most of this, uh, will probably be review if you remember anything from when we took our trip to Kennedy Space Center, if you paid any sort of attention. If you didn't, well, here you go. Um, but you do need to get this down in your notes. So, Sputnik 1 was the first artificial object to orbit the Earth. It was launched by the Soviet Union on October 4th of 1957, um, and it created a lot of panic, all right? People... Uh, thought for sure that the Soviets were trying, some thought that the Soviets were trying to um, steal our thoughts and our mind waves. Um, others thought that they were circling and preparing for another attack, for an attack, going to war. Um, so it created a lot of controversy. It created a lot of fuss. Sputnik 2 was launched less than a, less than a month, okay? Uh, later with a dog on board. So not only were they the first to launch something into the atmosphere that uh, orbited, but they launched a living creature with it just shortly uh, a month later, all right? Not even a full month later. Uh, so the U.S. had to respond because America, all right? Um, really, there's no better explanation than that. The U.S. needed to excuse me, we were, I mean, we were in the Cold War with uh, the Soviet Union at that point in time, and uh, there was a lot of fear there, so in an attempt to ease the fears, plus America, 
Um, the U.S. launched uh, Explorer 1, which was our response to Sputnik 1. It was launched in January of 1958, so it took several months for the United States to get something together in order to respond to Sputnik 1. Um, it was discovered, uh, sorry, not it was discovered, Explorer 1 discovered the Van Allen radiation belts, which uh, I want to say we've talked about earlier, but um, if not, look them up. I can't remember at this point. That's a long time ago. Um, Yuri Gagarin was the first person to travel in space when he made a single orbit around the Earth in Vostok 1. Now, he was uh, for the Soviet Union. Uh, so the Soviet Union was the first to put something in space, the first to put a creature in space, and the first to put a human in space. Uh, Alan Shepard was the first American in space. He was the response to Gagarin. And for a long time, America um, played catch-up to the Soviet Union as far as the space race goes. The Soviet Union would launch something, America would respond with something of equivalence. Um, it wasn't really until... John F. Kennedy came along that America started to make gains and advances in the space race. Um, John Glenn was the first American to orbit the Earth. Notice I said American. He wasn't the first person, but he was the first American. Uh, Valentina Tr uh, Tereshkova was the first woman to fly in space, all right? So the Soviet Union actually put her up into space uh, shortly after John Glenn went up. Uh, Voshkov 2, this was a Soviet, Soviet Union craft, all right, and it allowed a cosmonaut to exit the craft for 10 minutes, all right. Um, at one point in time, the uh, term astronaut wasn't commonly used, okay. They used the term cosmonaut instead, <clears throat> which was somebody who explored the stars and the cosmos, all right. Um, but it allowed someone to exit the craft for 10 minutes and actually spacewalk, quote unquote. Uh, the Gemini program was a series of 10 manned space flights that the U.S. launched in response to Voshkod, uh, and the Gemini was the starting point of building towards the Apollo program, which would be what put us on the moon. Here you go, the Apollo program. All right, the Apollo program put America in the lead of the space race. Okay, like I said, it wasn't really until uh, Kennedy came along that we started to lead and make leaps and bounds in the space race, and the Apollo program is what started all of that. Uh, Saturn V, these were rockets that launched spacecraft from Earth's surface to the moon, uh, and the Apollo 11 was the first mission to actually land a manned spacecraft on the moon. Uh, we learned a lot about that when we went to Kennedy Space Center. They had a lot of really cool information on that, so I'm not going to go through everything again. Um, but Neil Armstrong was the first human to set foot on another world on July 20th, 1969, um, which is coming up pretty soon, actually. That would make it the, what, 51st? Yes. July 20th will make it the 51st anniversary of uh, Armstrong landing on the moon, which is pretty cool. Manned space stations. So after we went to the moon, um, they decided they wanted some sort of lasting presence in space. And space stations were the answer to that. So space stations are places where people can live and work for months at a time in space. The Soviets launched the first one, uh, Salyut 1, in 1971. Okay, so even though we went to the moon first, we made some leaps and bounds, the Soviet, count, the Soviet Union comes back and takes the lead again with the uh, first space station, well, manned space station, uh, and the U.S. launched Skylab in 1973. That was our response, and it was the uh, the main one that we used for several years. Uh, Mir was the space station launched by the Soviet Union in 1968. It was designed so extra rooms could be added to the space station after it was in space. And this idea, the idea that, hey, we can send parts up and actually connect them to the space station and make it larger, led to the International Space Station, all right? So the International Space Station was launched in 1998. Um, it's really cool. I actually remember uh, watching this be launched. Um, my elementary school, they took us, uh, we used to have uh, big assemblies like in the cafeteria, um, and they 
took us all into the cafeteria. And let's see, 98, I would have been, how old would I have been? I would have been six. So first grade, I remember, um, well, six or seven. Depends on where I fell in the year. Anyway, um, I remember uh, sitting in the cafeteria and they rolled a big giant TV out um, and we watched the space station go up, uh, which was really cool. Uh, I didn't realize the significance of it as a first grader, but I still remember thinking, wow, this is so cool. Uh, and then the first crew arrived at the space station in 2000. Over 15 nations worked together to build it. Um, after the fall of the Soviet Union, uh, it was really a time for nations to come together and work towards a common goal in space instead of trying to outdo each other in, in an attempt to get to space. The space shuttle and space flights today. The split, uh, space shuttle was the first spacecraft that was designed to be reused. The Columbia was launched by the U.S. on April 12, 1981. This was the first one. Uh, the last one retired in 2011. I do remember watching um, space shuttle launches also in uh, the same elementary school, the same cafeteria, um, throughout the years growing up. Um, I remember specifically one happening when I was in fourth grade, and I, if I remember correctly, another one happened when I was in sixth grade. Um, but China was the third nation to successfully put a manned spacecraft into space in 2003. Um, if you remember from the uh, trip to Kennedy Space Center, in 2011, President Obama retired the space shuttle program and that opened up the avenue for um, more independent space study. Um, companies like Boeing, um, SpaceX, that's where they started coming into play as far as putting rockets up, putting devices up into space, all right? So that is, yeah, that's where we're going to end for this video this week. Um, I hope you guys are doing well. Seniors, please shoot me an e uh, answer the text, the post on the LMS with an email address so I can send you your study sheet because your final exam is coming home next week and you want to know what to study. Uh, anyway, I hope you guys are doing well. I miss you and I'm praying for you. Oh, end. Sorry, guys. My bad.